Many people believe that music is something that's heard, but I disagree with that, obviously. Um, I believe that music is something that is felt. It's something that hits your soul, especially if you're a deaf person and you like to crank up the subwoofer. <laughs> you know, I grew up in uh, Detroit, Michigan, which was a hotbed for music. A lot of famous musicians come from Detroit. Eminem, Kid Rock, Bob Seger, Ted Nugent, the list goes on. I became deaf at the age of nine months old from spinal meningitis, and I'm sure that it really hit my parents hard because they felt like they would not be able to share the one thing that they loved with me. They were wrong. My parents noticed that I had a knack for banging on things. I was always trying to make music, and I just had like this natural rhythm. So naturally, when I was five years old, my parents decided to buy me a drum set. And from that point forward, all I wanted to do was music. I wanted to be a rock star from the time I was five years old. So, you know, growing up, I was involved with bands and different things like that. And I was always trying to find music, you know. I was just trying to find a career in music. But naturally, when I was in high school, my parents encouraged me to go to college because I saw firsthand that being successful as a musician doesn't always happen the way you want it to. You know, to be like the Bob Seegers and the M&Ms of this world. So I went to uh, the Rochester Institute of Technology in New York. And I went from a school with about 40 deaf and hard of hearing students to a college with about 2,500 deaf and hard of hearing students. It was there that it really hit me that music was what I really wanted. When I was a student at RIT, I majored in everything. I just kept switching my major because I knew the one thing that I really wanted was music. And it was just during this time, uh, my second year at RIT, that I decided to leave school. And I moved back home to Detroit. And it was just during that time that I was just trying to look for a job. But I couldn't find anything. I didn't have a degree or anything. So it was during this time that I left school that I went to the Detroit Music Awards. And the Detroit Music Awards are where all of the musicians from Michigan come together and they give awards. My dad has won over 28 Music Awards there. So it was during this time that I was there that my dad comes over, and my dad's always excited to introduce me to people. So he comes over and he's like, you got to meet somebody. Come over here. So we go over to this table, and I meet this guy that has a deaf brother-in-law. Now, as a deaf person, and then as any person in the world, it's one person that it takes to make a connection. And this guy was Eminem's publisher, and he owned the recording studios where Eminem worked at. So we're developing a relationship, and he gives me his email address, and he says, if you want free tickets to an Eminem concert, please contact me. I emailed him all the time. I knew that this was my man. I was emailing him about everything. But, you know, I decided to go back to school because obviously education is important. And I went back to school and it was during this time that I really loved signing songs to girls. So I decided around this time to make a videotape of myself signing one of Eminem's songs. And we made the videotape a really nice presentation. And I called Joel Martin up who had give me, give, given me his email address. And I called him up and I'm like, Joel... I have something I want to show you. And he's like, okay. So I go to the studio and I walk into this room and there's Eminem sitting right there. He's on break from recording. I'm like, wow, I have a cool audience to show my video to. So we're watching the video and at the end of it, Eminem looks at me and he's like, deaf people like music? He's like, <laughs> but for the, from that point forward, uh, Joel decided to hire me to work that is our studio, and come up with the concept. And the concept that we came up with was DPAN, the Deaf Professional Arts Network. It's a nonprofit that we aim on making music and music culture accessible for deaf and hard of hearing people. And uh, the first video that we created, we flew in people from all over, the, all over the United States to participate in this video, Waiting on the World to Change by John Mayer.
That little girl, she's seven years old now, and she loves music. She wants to do a music video as uh, Taylor Swift or something like that. I mean, she loves music, and that's what I wanted with Deep Pen, is I wanted to make music and music culture accessible. And as an artist myself, I've written my own songs, and this next song that I'm going to show you, I believe it's one of the most accessible videos out there. It's a song called I'm Dead. So, so dead. Definitely dead, kid. So, so dead. My name is Sean, but they call me Scene. Got a message here I'm delivering. Look, I understand that you might be leery. Getting music beats from the heart of here. So, what matters next to me? is I want to make music accessible for deaf and hard of hearing audiences. And that's my goal. That will always continue to be my goal. So we got to get to know each other. But I'm going to let the next speaker go, and I'll be back at 3 o'clock to perform for you all. So stay situated, and I'll be back to rock the house. Thank you.